What is up, guys? It is Marcus from Perspective Sports, and today we'll be talking about the College Football Playoff Committee's Top 25 as they released the first one of this year, this past Tuesday. And overall, it's actually a pretty solid ranking. There's a couple of things I disagree with, hence the title of this video. And I agree with a lot of things, but I picked out two in particular. And so without further ado, let's dive right into it with two things that I agree with. And the first thing I agree with is the fact that Penn State is inside the top four. I was really happy to see the committee had Penn State inside the top five, but I was really happy to see they had them at four and had the guts to put them over Clemson. Penn State doesn't have those marquee Heisman candidate players like Saquon Barkley or Trace McSorley, but they do have a really solid team that has two top 20 wins. The first year starter, Sean Clifford, has played phenomenal. 20 touchdowns over 1,900 yards and only three interceptions. The run game is balanced when you look top to bottom on the statistics. It is balanced. And then the defense has played extremely well. And so when you look at this Penn State team, there's no real jump out at you players like a Saquon Barkley, but this team is really good and is a legitimate contender. They do still have to play Ohio State, so we'll see how that goes. And the second thing I agree with is the fact that Clemson is not a top four team in the country at this moment. There are four better teams better than Clemson. When you look at Clemson, I, I don't like to penalize teams for conferences because you can't control that. You play who you play in your conference. So I like to judge teams based off what you have control of. And that's the fact that Clemson went to College Station and beat Texas A&M by two touchdowns, which is not an easy task to do. And that's why I have them inside the top five and why I agree they should be a top five team. But I do give bonuses for conferences that are tough, which is why I like the fact that the SEC and the Big Ten make up the entire playoff right now because they have tough conferences. And when you look at the ACC, the competition is just not there. You have... Wake Forest is the second best team, but they're no contender by any stretch of the imagination. You have Virginia, who's also very good, but no contender by any stretch of the imagination. Miami University is more concerned with looking good than playing good. Florida State's a dumpster fire. They just fired Willie Taggart. And overall, the conference isn't as good as it used to be. North Carolina is hot and cold from week to week. Uh, Syracuse hasn't really been much of anything this year. And so that's really hurt Clemson's strength of schedule, especially when you look at the schedule. But... They still are a top five team because what they went out and did was go to College Station and win by two touchdowns. And that's why they're a top five team in the country. And now for two things that I think the committee got wrong slash I disagree with. And Memphis should be the highest ranked group of five team in the country. And I know you're going to call this nitpicky, but no, it's really not because it's only a one ranking difference. But I do think Memphis should be the highest ranked. And when you look at their losses, which the committee probably looked at, Cincinnati lost to Ohio State who the committee ranked number one in the country, and Memphis lost to Temple. So you're probably thinking, what universe can we put Memphis over Cincinnati? But you can, because when you look at the look at the current rankings, Memphis has two wins over teams currently ranked inside the top 25. Cincinnati has zero. And when I watch these two teams play, the eye test, Memphis just looks better. When you go back and watch that SMU game, Memphis played three different games inside of one game. The first half was close grinded out football. The third quarter, they jumped out to a big lead. And in the fourth quarter, late in the game, they staved off a strong comeback against a legitimate SMU team. That SMU team I thought was going to go undefeated, at least during the regular season. I don't know about the bowl game, but I at least thought they were going to go undefeated. But Memphis staved off a fourth quarter, especially late, a touchdown, matched it with a touchdown. Quick touchdown by SMU, matched it with a touchdown. This Memphis team is legit. And I, when these two teams play, probably in the AC, AAC title, because Memphis did beat SMU and Navy, who are there in their division, and Cincinnati is going to coast through their, their side of the division. I think we'll find out that day, and I think Memphis will win that game. And now for the, the less nitpicky thing, and the thing that just drives me up a wall, is how LSU is not number one in the country. I've been pounding the LSU number one drum for a while now. And it's mainly because no one has a resume like LSU. LSU has three top 10 victories. They went two Texas in one and then beat Florida and Auburn in a three-week span. And how can the committee say who you play matters and then look at LSU, look at Ohio State, and then say, well, LSU doesn't matter. Ohio State's number one. How could you, how could you come to that conclusion? And I understand the eye test is important. You see the teams play. Well, let's talk about the eye test. I saw them go to Texas and play a complete football game to start the season. You know how hard that is? And then I saw them dominate Florida 
for 60 minutes. And then I saw them grind it out and beat Auburn. That's the eye test matched with the schedule. That's a number one team in the country. I understand Ohio State is a great football team. Chase Young, I would take number one if I didn't need a quarterback. Number 100, I'd take Chase Young number one. And then Justin Fields is really good, and they beat people to sleep. Shout out to Coach Buddy Stevens. But there's no case to be made for Ohio State being number one right now. And if you want to throw out Texas, throw them out. Texas isn't ranked right now. How does that count? Well, fine. They still have a dominant victory over the number 10 team in the country, Florida. They still beat Auburn. They still play a very tough schedule. They still had to go to Texas and play a football game. They had to go there. So if you don't want to, if you want to say, well, Texas isn't really that good of a team, they still had to go to Texas and play that game. You have any idea how loud that stadium was? I, I don't see how you can say who you play matters and then LSU not be number one. You can see, and like I said, I don't penalize teams for playing bad, bad conference schedules, and neither of these teams, Ohio State or LSU, have bad conferences. But I will give you a boost. And so when your conference produces a top 10 team like Florida and you beat them, you get a boost. When your conference produces the number 11 team in the country, Auburn, and you beat them, you get a boost. This is how this thing should work. So I really don't understand how the committee ranks these teams. So let me know down in the comment section what you think. Do you think LSU should be number one? Can you make a case for Ohio State that can probably convince me? If you can convince me... I don't know what I'll do, but it'll be it'll 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 be impressive because I don't see how you can point to a resume like LSU and then say, well, that's not worthy of a number one team in the country. Thank you for watching. See you in the comments section.